Thanks. Um, so in this lecture, we're going to talk about unemployment. Um, we'll try to motivate a little bit um, why we want to study unemployment, why unemployment is such an important problem uh, in macroeconomics. And then we'll introduce the matching function, which is going to be a key tool uh, that we'll use this semester to study uh, unemployment. So I'll show you some data to motivate the use of the matching function and we'll study a little bit um, the theoretical properties of the matching function. Um, so um, unemployment, why is it that um, we, we care so much about uh, unemployment? So um, let's see, so if you are uh, Right. So if you think a little bit about um, different aspects of the macroeconomy that people seem to be concerned about, um, you have roughly three things that come back very often um, when you think about uh, macroeconomic issues. So um, some things that comes back um, very often that you see in the news um, and also in textbooks is notions linked to um, GDP, so gross domestic product, or gross. Right, so that's something that you see uh, that you see a lot. Something that you see also quite often are issues of inflation. Inflation being too high, sometimes you hear about hyperinflation, um, things of that sort. And of course, the third issue that we see very often is unemployment. All right. So, um, so this is a macro course, you know, that um, is designed especially for um, the developed economies. You know, we are not going to have much to say about developing economies and in a sense developing economies work uh, very differently from developed economies and it requires uh, a set of tools that are quite different from what we're going to, to use this semester. So here you should really think about um, developed economies. So um, you know, in North America you can think about Canada, the US, uh, many economies in Western Europe, Japan, um, South Korea, um, places like that. Um, so these, you know, the tool you have to understand, we don't have in macroeconomics, we don't have tools that just apply across the board to any country uh, that you may think of. And so you have to, because countries are so different, they have such different histories and different institutions, you have to adapt your tools to the countries that you're going to look at. Um, and so what we're going to see this semester is mostly uh, adapted to think about um, labor markets and macroeconomies and advanced uh, economies. So, if you look at the macroeconomy uh, of advanced economies, so you can have these three different um, things that may bother you. So first, let's think about growth a little bit. I mean, something that's quite clear is that all these advanced economies have had a lot of growth in the 20th century, such that now the amount of uh, G, you know, GDP consumption that's available to people seem to be you know, sufficient in most of these places. You know, there are issues uh, there are issues of distribution, a little bit, you know, inequality, but um, the amount that's available to consume seems uh, to be sufficient. So, you know, GDP is not, uh, I don't think any insufficient GDP is not a striking problem in advanced economies. And you, really, you will hear often about growth, how much GDP grew by 1%, 2%. This seems, you know, this type of issue seems just fairly relevant. Um, so, you know, these are not things that we think that are very, uh, that are very important. Something that you hear often about too is an, uh, inflation. Uh, and it's true that um, many advanced economies have had to struggle with issues of inflation uh, in the past. Um, so, for instance, in, in Europe and in the US in the 70s, uh, there, there were big issues of inflation. Inflation was really high. And that was, uh, that was problematic. But since the 1980s, inflation has been very stable uh, you know, in Western Europe and in the US, uh, in Canada, 
Right? So inflation is, although it's talked about a lot, it's, uh, it's kind of a non-issue now. Um, because the way monetary policy is conducted has improved a lot and um, inflation is not something that we worry uh, about too much. So this is something that's not uh, directly, uh, directly relevant. So this leaves us with unemployment. Now, unemployment is a problem that really um, hasn't been solved um, at all. If you look at you know, the amount of unemployment since we have good statistics, uh, so we have government statistics since uh, the end of World War II, you will see that uh, unemployment remains you know, on average at the same level. It's not, we haven't made really systematic problem, systematic progress on the average level of unemployment and the fluctuations of unemployment remain also uh, quite high. And some, you know, some countries, especially in Europe, are still struggling with very high actually level uh, of unemployment. Uh, so unemployment remains something that we haven't, you know, we haven't been able to, uh, to deal with. Uh, so this remains really a very important problem. Uh, and so that's a problem that we are going to deal with, try to deal with this semester, try to understand where unemployment comes from and try to understand um, the policies that can be used to tackle unemployment. And so why do we think that unemployment uh, is a big problem? So there are several uh, there are several ways to think about it. Um, I think the you know, maybe the most important reason why unemployment is such a big problem still is that uh, in developed economies and I guess in general people really um, people's job is very important to them. A lot of people derive uh, a lot of meaning in life from their job. Uh, you know, very often your identity comes from the job that you are uh, that you're doing and so having a job is something that's very important to people that gives meaning uh, that gives a sense to their life and so if you deprive people of jobs it's something that's going to be um, very costly um, and so in fact there are several ways that this importance of jobs manifest themselves um, so if you look at um, well-being surveys so these are large-scale surveys in which uh, people ask uh, respondents about their, their well-being. You see that there are three factors that always come back as very important to people's well-being. So, uh, and unemployment is always among them. Other things that are very costly besides unemployment and at the same level are, are divorce, of course, and losing one's family members. Um, so these are the three key things that will always come back in well-being surveys as being uh, fundamentally important. Uh, so this tells you that having a job is something that's um, very important to people. Um, and there are other ways in which you can see that uh, unemployment matters a lot, and we are going to talk a little bit about them uh, this semester. Um, and so besides that, of course, unemployment and um, slack in general, they matter because they um, represent a waste of uh, resources. That is, you have labor that's available to work and that's not, not used uh, for working. And so clearly that waste of resources is something that we also care about. And so trying to reduce unemployment is also a way to tackle um, that type of waste of resources. But I think the most important here is clearly the fact that people uh, care a lot about having a job. Uh, that's something that uh, that's going to be very important. 